Hello my dear student. Let us continue lecture number 5. Today it is part 1. Today we will learn pre-fertilization structures and event. So in chapter 1 we have collected some information regarding pre-fertilization. So let us see that under this topic what are the different points we have to learn so number one stamen the male reproductive organ about the stamen we will learn here then number two microsporogenesis we have to learn then number three structure and development of pollen grains male gametophytes we have to learn number four pistil the female reproductive organ we have to learn then number five structure of ovule we have to learn number six Mega sporogenesis we have to learn. So all these are the topic that comes under pre-fertilization structures and event. So one by one let us start today. Then again we have to learn about pollination. So pollination also falls under pre-fertilization process. Now let us learn one by one. Number one, stamen, the male reproductive organ. So my dear student, uh, already in our lecture number five, we came to know different part of a typical flower. So there we have learned that androsium is the uh, third wall of a typical flower and androsium is the male reproductive part. And one unit of endosium is known as stamen and stamens represent the male reproductive organ okay so now this is stamen and stamen consists of anther and filament clear so stamen consists of two parts filament and anther so can you see anther and filament so anther and filament together is known as stamen Everybody understood? So what is stamen? Filament and anther together this structure is known as stamen. Filament is long and slender stalk attached proximally to the thalamus and petals of the flower. So filament it is long and slender uh, and it is attached proximally to the thalamus and petals of the flower and it bears an anther digitally so you may see the anther is present digitally so that so anther it is at the tip of the filament and filament is that long portion of the stamen okay now let us uh, learn about anther anther is a bilobed Okay, so anther is a bilobed structure and anther has two lobes and knob-like fertile part of the stamen. So anther is knob-like structure and it is the fertile part of the stamen and knob-like bilobed structure. The two anther loops separated by a deep groove in the anterior side and attached to each other by a sterile parenchymatous tissue called connective on the posterior side okay so uh, both the loop are separated by a deep groove okay so you may see here in the diagram a red portion is shown between these two loop so that portion is uh, a type of tissue clear and that part is known as connective and they are present in the posterior side clear so then next each anther loop has two chambers so each anther has two chambers so here you may see the anther is dissected and here you may find that two loops are visible and each loop has two chamber you may see here two chamber are there so in each loop two chamber which possess pollen sac so each chamber is known as pollen sac clear or they are known as microsporangia 
microsporangy also you can say or pollen sacs so here how many microsporangium are there four microsporangium so in one loop two microsporangia and in a anther there are four microsporangium so when it is in singular number we will call microsporangium and in plural term we will call it as a microsporangia okay you may say microsporangia also or pollen sacs so these are known as pollen sac and there are four pollen sac so each loop has two pollen sac okay two chamber so each loop has two chamber and two chamber uh, poses pollen sac okay or microsporangia a bilobed anther is tetrasporangiate okay because of which because they possess four so four means tetra and a four microsporangia because of which tetra microsporangiate clear clear so we have learned today about stamen so what is stamen stamen is the male reproductive organ we have learned about that stamen consists of uh, two part filament and anther filament is that long and slender part of the stamen whereas anther is the uh, knob like structure that is uh, placed digitally on the filament okay and anther is the bilobed structure each loop of anther has two chamber okay and the two chamber possess pollen sac or pollen sac are known as microsporangium clear and a bilobed anther consists of four chambers which possess four microsporangia because of which they are known as tetra sporangiate clear so i hope that all of you have understood about the stamen clear okay next let us see that uh, in that bilobed or uh, structure that is anther if we dissect it in transverse section then how it will look now let us know about microsporangium a microsporangium or pollen sac is a cylindrical sac which appears circular clear so these are the diagram which shows microsporangium so microsporangium if we uh, uh, cut it in transverse section then it looks like circular portion you may see in the diagram so in cylindrical sac it is a cylindrical sac which appears circular in transverse section clear now we are learning about one one chamber okay one one chamber possesses pollen sac or microsporangium now this microsporangium consists of two part okay one is outer wall and another one is central homogeneous sporogenous tissue so you may see sporogenous tissue in the diagram it is leveled so one is outer wall and another is sporogenous tissue clear so these are the two parts of microsporangium the outer wall has four types of layer so outer wall has four types of layer you may see in the diagram epidermis clear the outermost one is epidermis then next you may see endothesium you may see in the diagram endothesium then one three middle layer one three middle layer you may see and tapetum can you see tapetum so these are the four types of layer outer wall is made up of clear now you may see that if uh, one portion of it is taken and it is been zoomed then the next diagram you may see epidermis then uh, endothesium middle layer clear 
स्टेप्टम इज लिटिल मोर ग्रोन वन द नाउ नेक्स्ट द आउटर थ्री लेयर्स प्रोटेक्ट द यंग एंथर क्लियर सो आउटर थ्री लेयर्स ओके सो आउटर थ्री लेयर्स विच आर द आउटर थ्री लेयर्स एपिडर्मिस एंडोथेसियम एंड वन थ्री मिडिल लेयर्स सो दिस ऑल प्रोटेक्ट द यंग एंथर एंड टेक पार्ट इन मेकानिजम ऑफ डिहेंसिस इन द राइपन एंथर क्लियर सो दे अल्टीमेटली प्रोटेक्ट द एंथर एंड इन फ्यूचर वेन द राइपनिंग ऑफ एंथर विल टेक पार्ट टेक प्लेस दे विल टेक ए एक्टिव रोल देयर देन द एंडो थेसियम इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड फाइबरस लेयर वाई बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ फाइबरस थिकनिंग clear so this part because of which they can protect the young anther then the tepal cells enlarged and become filled with dense protoplasmic content as well as nutrients so you may see in the second the diagram that tepal is slightly larger and they are filled with protoplasmic content as well as the nutrient so this is a matured anther you may see in a matured anther when it is dissected it shows that the pollen grains are formed clear so one one chamber has one one pollen sac so this is here it is shown two pollen sac and in this two pollen sac pollen grains are formed clear okay now let us see function of टेप्टम सो लेट एस नो व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट फंक्शन ऑफ टेप्टम सो ओके नंबर वन फंक्शन ऑफ टेप्टम इज इट प्रोवाइड्स नरिशमेंट टू द डेवलपिंग माइक्रोस्पोर मादर सेल्स एंड पोलेन ग्रेन्स इधर बाय फॉर्मिंग ए प्लास्मोडियम ओके सो इफ दे फॉर्म प्लास्मोडियम देन दे विल बी एमोबोइड टाइप और थ्रो डिफ्यूजन इफ इट परफॉर्म बाय डिफ्यूजन देन दे are secretory type so tepal what does they do they provide nourishment to the developing microspore mother cell so microspore mother cell and the pollen grains okay then number 2 it provides lipid rich ubis granules containing sporopollenin for exine formation ओके सो दे प्रोवाइड लिपिड सम ग्रेन्यूल्स फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एक्सिन फॉर्मेशन सो लेटर विल कम टू नो व्हाट इज एक्सिन एंड व्हाई इट इज फॉर्म्ड देन नंबर थ्री फंक्शन ऑफ टेप्टम इज इट सीक्रेट्स एंजाइम्स लाइक कैलेस रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर डिग्रेशन ऑफ कैलस वॉल अराउंड पॉलन tetrate so they also secrete some enzyme that will help to degrade okay for the degradation they will degrade and the callus wall which is around the pollen tetrate so that uh, a time will come when the pollen tetrate that wall has to be broken so because of which they will produce some enzyme clear so these are the different uh, function of tepal now let us know what is microsporogenesis so here is a diagram which shows the process of microsporogenesis so the process of formation of pollen grains through meiosis in pollen mother cells is termed as microsporogenesis so what is microsporogenesis the formation of pollen grains through meiosis process in pollen mother cell so this process will occur where in pollen mother cell okay so that pollen mother cell here in the diagram it is microsporocyte clear so microsporocyte you may see callus wall is there then diploid nucleus is there can you see it okay now 
sporogenous tissue within the anther group and transform into pollen mother cell which we can say PMC so pollen mother cell from where it is grown so the anther okay within the anther some uh, sporogenous tissues are there so they will grow and they will transform into pollen mother cell which in turn produce tetrade of microspores or pollen grain so here you may see through the process of meiosis 1 what happened um, diploid nucleus that is twice number of nucleus it is divided first then uh, after that meiosis second occur and because of which haploid nuclei are developed four haploid after that process you may find that tetrade is formed and this tetrade is microspores microspores or we may call pollen grain the pollen grains of a tetrade grow and separate from one another usually the arrangement of microspores in a tetrade is tetrahedral so you may see that the microspores are arranged in tetrahedral in a tetrade clear